In today's episode, we explore the journey of a critical care nurse turned painter. While feeling stuck in a chaotic time of her life, she channeled that energy into expressive art and a new career. Through muted tones and landscapes, her paintings tell the story of her life. This is The Outliers, Eileen Fitzgerald. Eileen, Hello. so nice to meet you. you as well. Tell me a little bit about how you found your style and like how does your creative process work? Like many artists, I feel like it was a lifetime of figuring out what is my signature style. And it really came down to like my signature hobbies from being a little kid, like antiquing with my mom, huge vintage antique vibes, whether it comes from like inspirations from tapestry work to how things are framed to everything being more muted and almost a grayscale, much like a lot of vintage work you'll find. So I'm actually much more wanting to showcase a duality of what life is, which is like pretty dark and also pretty beautiful. Coming from a background of being a nurse and an eternal like nurturer, I always want to nurture any breathing thing, honestly. So to know that a, something that I created could be in your home and soothe you, that's the, that's the intention. When you are creating, are you creating with what you want the viewer to feel or do you just pour out your soul? Uh, I think it's a combination of both. So when I first started painting, which was during COVID and a very challenging time as a nurse, um, I hadn't painted in years. And that first painting brought back so much to me of how much painting soothes myself. And when I first started this process of like applying layers of paint, it made me realize like, what I give to my patients as a nurse when I'm giving them a bath or something and like lovingly petting them, soothing them. I was doing it to myself in these paintings. So the paintings are a combination of me soothing myself with the intention of whoever I get to gift, give this painting to or let go of this painting at one point, the intention is to soothe the receiver. So it's soothing myself and hopefully others. <laughs> That's first off, everything you want your nurse to be like, right? Like <laughs> you must've been a fantastic nurse. Like Thank that is you. incredible. I didn't choose to, to be an artist, which is what I always wanted to be as a kid, but I didn't choose it originally because I thought it was something selfish and that I couldn't like nurture within it. And then once I started doing it and I realized the vulnerable moments I'd find at, within being a mother, within being a nurse, I, tenfold get it as being an artist because it's the most vulnerable thing you can do is to show bits of your brain and then to talk with people that want your art. The greatest thing I've ever heard is energy is currency and thinking in that way has changed my life. I believe everything has energy, your own energy, but let alone the things that you decide to touch and love upon. It's in these fibers, it's on the paper you paint on and you gifting that to someone else, like that energy gets to go live somewhere else. And it's just like this old building I get to work in too. Like the lives and the stories are embedded in these walls. And I feel like in some way, like something else is taking care of me, it's taking care of this. Yeah, it's all passed on. That's a, that's a little hippy dippy. Like yeah, I, I love it. But, <laughs> I mean like that, but but it's, it's very real. Like, and, and Obviously, you're like a living embodiment of all of this working out. I mean, I didn't even, I did not used to think in this way at all. And I've been taught so much from just trusting of living in the process of painting and trusting and, and being swept up in the emotion of it and learning. Yeah, when I pay attention to this like energy, it something crazy happens every time a nurse that is a wildly different path there's tons of school so regimented i want to hear about your transition into art before being an artist so much of my life was just lived by the expectations placed upon you like it was very regimented i was a machine i was really good at being told what to do and really good at excelling so on the weekends growing up i would just paint solo um all the time and saying like, I wanna grow up and be an artist. This is what I wanna do and being told. And my parents were thinking like the best for me is like, no, we're not doing art school. Like that's not gonna get you a for sure job. And so I always had this mindset of like, I've gotta work really hard, get my straight A's, get into college, get the scholarships, excel, 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 excel. There wasn't anything after college. I feel like so many of us do that. 
you get the job, you land it, you did it. And like, now what? You're doing it, but like, what are you feeling? What are you doing? COVID was so hard for so many of us, but I also think it woke so many of us up because you were so sick of what was going on your day to day. And I stumbled upon my paintbrushes during it. And painting that one scene was not just like light bulb moment. It was a blazing fire and I burned my world down. I like left my relationship, left my job, moved into my home and said, I have four weeks to pay my rent with art. And I don't recommend it in that way, but like I was so uncomfortable in my day-to-day -day life that painting made me realize that uncomfortability was also just pure unhappiness. I'd strayed so far from where I thought I wanted to be. That one painting taught me that. Like little Eileen did not imagine me just grinding every single day for what? And so I very dramatically got uncomfortable in another way, but it wasn't worse than my uncomfortability before. It was better because it was of my own will. Like, and I was trusting like, hey, if I trust myself a little bit, let's see what I can do. Worst comes to worst, I'm a nurse. I can go back and get a job. I can go drive for Uber. I can do a million things to pay my rent, but I'm gonna try first to do art because that one painting, like you can't put the genie back in the bottle. I have to do it or there's not another option. So I did it. So many people, like the hardest thing for them to do is rip off the bandaid. Yeah. They don't wanna disappoint mom and dad. They have this cush job, it's the golden handcuffs, yeah. but they their soul is sucked and you said it so perfectly. The horror and the misery of the soul suckingness in this steady job is way worse than the uncertainty of making your rent in those four weeks. Totally, and if, if you can imagine, if you took everyone's expectations of you away, like what you're supposed to do, how much you're supposed to make, what you're, anything, like what's left? And my easiest formula for that, cause I was like, what? Who is Eileen? When I left my role as a nurse, I'm always gonna be a mother, that's a huge role, but Leaving nursing, leaving the relationship I was in, I had no idea who I was. And the greatest thing I learned was, what did little Eileen like to do? And that's been my answer for everything. Like, it's the most simple formula, is the core of who you are stays pretty much the same. And it's almost like an unbecoming. You're, everything you know and like and want and desire is has always been there from being a little kid. And you can make it so simple by thinking about what joys did I find as a kid? Do those things, you'll have the most joyful life. So now my days are filled with riding my bike. Love doing that as a kid. Playing with my daughter like a kid. Obviously love doing that. And then I painted all the time. So coming back to that and like shedding all the layers of expectation, like life is so simple now because it's just be kid like Eileen and obviously have my adult responsibilities, but at my core, do what little Eileen wanted to do. And the, yeah, it's cracked a lot of things wide open. I have met some very, very wealthy people and they're just, there's something missing. Like yeah. happiness does not equate to wealth. And it's like success, what is success? It's like feeding your inner child. Totally. It, it's so crazy because all of this is inside of us. Like what you just explained, everyone has access to. Everyone has access to and like you said, when it comes down to money, like, yeah, we all need to be paying our rent. And I feel like we're so lucky to live in this day and age where you can have multiple side jobs. Like I think of our parents where they worked 40, 50 years with the same company, same role, which is such a testament and amazing. But you don't have to do that anymore. Like you can totally, I'm not saying leave your job. It's also attainable to have your passions and do your, playful inner child work as hobbies. Like it's all attainable in some way. Um, for me though, like painting was and is such a huge part of who I am. Like I had to blow up my world in order to get to do this again. So I did, but not everyone has to blow up the world. I asked my daughter, what are the 10 things you wanna be? Cause I wanna have 10 jobs, like 10 different jobs because I want everyone to know you have the permission to change your mind. Like go to nursing school, go to law school, do whatever, it has no bearing 
on your future because as you continue to unbecome or figure out what you want, you can change your mind and do things you want. Like, I'm pretty sure I'll want to paint for the rest of my life, but I also want to be a park ranger. I also want to be a librarian. So like, I could go to school and do those things. And in the past, it was such an obstacle in my head of thinking like, I can't spend the money to go to design school or art school. Like I already went to nursing school. Where there's a will, there's a way. Like you'll figure it out and it's yourself that's like not giving yourself the permission. You can change your mind. It's so cool to change your mind. Tell me about the first time you got paid for your art. That is like the defining moment. Yeah, well, I mean, it brings me back to saying we live in such a cool time. Like we have so many free tools and options. So I just started a social media account, put a few of my paintings and of course, like loving friends and family do. They're like, I wanna buy this. And then another friend sees it and they commission you to, to do a piece. And it was, I probably did about four of those and realized I do not wanna be paid to be told what to paint. So I'm just gonna paint whatever I want and see where this goes. But just knowing like, wow, someone wanted to buy something that I created, like that's cool. Um, yeah, it just lit a spark in me. More so though, like monetarily that was not the, um, that didn't feed me. It was, oh my gosh, I got this taste of this whole right side of my brain that I haven't gotten to use for the last decade. I've just, I've been a nurse and just, doing the regimented thing, like getting the taste of applying an idea to a canvas. Like I, you couldn't stop me, I was starving for it. So having that little bit of trust that family and friends would buy it, um, but then more so just, I had to feed the like starving beast inside of me and just trust like, I'm gonna create this and see if anybody likes it, but more so I have to create this to live. I honestly emailed every dream client I could think of when I first started. I had barely done a few paintings. I just knew from that first painting, this is what I'm gonna do with my life. And if they don't like it, it's okay because I like it, but let me just see if they like it. So I emailed everyone, everyone. And I got all no's back. And my response was, oh my gosh, that's, that's totally fine. I just started, maybe next year, like as I explore this more. And about six months later, I got a yes from one of my absolute dream clients. I thought they had never even received the email. And so that was my like surefire footing of, oh my God, like this can be something that I build upon. Share some of like the most important lessons that you've learned while like branching out on your own. And then some advice for someone that is in the nursing job, they're a an accountant, they're a teacher, whatever they are, and they, they want to follow their passions. If you already know what your passion is, you know what you wanna do, that to me is the greatest battle. If you don't yet know, go back to the little version of yourself. What did you love to do? What did you obsess over? What brought you so much joy? I'm sure some somewhere in there your passion lies. If you already know what you wanna do, start taking those steps. The only way we evolve is to get uncomfortable so those steps likely include taking some time out of your really rigid day to a lot to this passion, whether it's creating, whether it's just putting yourself out there in a way, like you've got to dedicate time and energy to it and you can always start small. And also your passion does not have to make you money. Make it your hobby though, like make sure that you have time and energy spent towards this thing. And maybe you become just so obsessed that you're like, I gotta figure out how to make this my job. But don't ever let money take away from that initial passion. Make it a hobby, but make it a job, but make it a priority always. Um, I feel like that's where we thrive.